Let me start off by saying that we are so living under an open heaven in this season. The Lord has granted us access to him immeasurable. Listen, literally, whatever you need from him, you can have it. The Lord is not hiding. He's not holding back. He's not making it difficult. He is fully available. But the difficult part is us acting on faith to receive what has already been provided. I want to say starting off that right now this, just like heaven is open, this altar is open all service long. I'm going to give you a disclaimer. Matter of fact, let me make this statement. I'm just going to kind of let the Lord flow how he wants. I never know how this kind of thing is going to go. I just step forth and I just believe that he's going to have his way. Let me say this to you, though. If you can get past the opinions of people, you could get super free. If you can get past the opinions and the thoughts of man, you can be super healed. The Lord is going to be speaking to you all throughout this service. He's already started. The Lord is already talking to you, and he's been speaking to you. And what I need you to understand that oftentimes the Lord requires an action. And so I say this altar is open all service long because when you hear him, come handle your business with him. Yeah, he can, he can do everything that he wants to do from your seat, but a lot of times he ain't going to do that because he's already growing weary of the comfort zones that we've created. Dad has grown weary of our comfort zones. We basically come up with these limitations and we say, Lord, you can do whatever you want to do within the confines of my comforts. That's why we have not us have an experience fullness the way we're designed to. And so I just say that in a challenge. If you hear the Lord's voice, respond. Come handle your business with him. Yeah, but people are going to think something wrong with me. It is something wrong with you. <laughs> and there's something wrong with me. And there's something wrong with the people who think it's something wrong with you. <laughs> we got that in common. That's why we're here. <laughs> Healthy people don't go to the hospital. I'm here because I'm sick. And I want to be healed. And every time he heals me, he shows me other areas of sickness. And I want to be healed. <laughs> and this lifelong process is what I'm signing up for. Because I'm still one of them people that's glad to be a flesh-eating, blood-drinking Jesus freak. <laughs> yes, Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Matter of fact, since you said that, who is that sitting next to you, sis? Yes. Your husband. When I was in worship, I just looked back. I promise you, when I was in worship, I looked back. And for some reason, the Lord highlighted you too. What's your name, man? John. The Lord's doing something in your heart, John. The Lord is doing a new thing in your heart. It's like a spotlight on you, man. It's a spotlight on you because the Lord is letting you know, I've heard you. I know you. And I'm available to you. 
I mean, the Lord is on your side, and he wants you and your family to win. And I prophesy and declare to you today that y'all going to win. Y'all going to be all right. Come on, y'all just point your hands to John. Put your hand in my hand, John. Father, we thank you, Lord, that it is not coincidental that this moment is happening. You saw this moment far before we did, and we just thank you in advance for your power, for your presence, and your glory impressed upon this family that you have marked them out for your use. Satan, everything you got in the works, it's time is up now. We declare every weapon, every scheme, and everything that you have done to be nullified in this moment by the authority of Christ. Father, we thank you for your blood. We thank you for opening their hearts and giving them greater appetite for your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. As you all commit to seeking the Lord together, the Lord is going to commit to giving you direction and clarity like you've never had it. And that's what's going to lead your whole family to victory. Thank you, Lord. I got to make some statements to you because in my time of preparation and in my quiet time with the Lord, he said that he wanted me to speak on some specific things. And so I have to say this because somebody's soul is dependent upon this. One of the things he told me to say was, whoever you are, that is still trapped and leaning on your zodiac sign and astrology. You're one of those people that, that, that you're heavily, you're leaning into what your sign means and the characteristics and all of the things that come along with, with, with zodiac and astrology. The Lord says, stop it. Now that you are a believer in Christ, those old things have to pass away. Amen. The leading of your life will not happen through divination and those means, what they call necromongers and all of this new age spiritism. God is not leading through any of that. That is the leading of the enemy. And what you haven't realized yet is being, being, uh, being, uh, 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 being connected to that has partly been the reason why the anxiety and the depression that you deal with has been able to remain. Only the one who created you reserves the right to define you. If you want to study something that's going to really lead and guide you, study the Word of God. And the Word of God is Jesus. Study Jesus. Again, if you hear or feel a tug at your heart, respond to the Lord. Come to His holy altar and offer Him up the thing that needs to be sacrificed. Because if you provide the sacrifice, he'll provide the fire. The Lord is saying, don't leave here with the elephant that you walked in with. There's an elephant in the room. And I could see it in the spirit. And the Lord is saying, you don't have to leave here with that elephant. The Lord said, this altar... It's big enough for the sacrifice of that elephant. And you can really leave different for real. Like we don't come and do this for just some kind of mental exercise or some emotional, some emotional experience. This is real. The Lord is real. His power is real. I was really a loser, dropout, whoremonger who was lost in the sauce. That was really my real life. And now I'm really a one woman man that has been faithful to my wife my entire marriage. Human power don't do that from where I come from. I've been pornography free for over eight years. 
That ain't willpower. Willpower don't do that. The power of God is real. And if you give him permission, he'll show you. Another thing he said, and I got a quick word after this. We're going to go through, the word won't be long, but, but we have to handle this spiritual business. He says, he says, he told me to tell some, stop associating yourself with the sins and characteristics of your bloodline. He said, stop it. I'm just like my grandmom and them. They just run in the family. No, that need to stop running in the family. When they get to you, the run should run out. Because you are blood-bought new creature in Christ Jesus. And whatever rights and access the enemy had previous to you fails and stops at you. You can say out loud, the buck stops here. The Lord has given you the authority and the permission to declare and make that statement. And if you stand on it flat-footed, according to the word, he'll back you up. And if the Lord stand with you and back you up, who going to stand against you? Who going to check you, boo? <laughs> the Lord also says, stop. Stop leaning into the old you. Yeah, we know where you come from. We all got a story. Stop leaning into the story. Because when you lean into the story as an identity marker, you give the story permission to continue to define your forward steps. And if nothing changes, nothing changes. That's who you thought you were. The reason why I lived the way I lived before Christ is because that's who I thought I was. I was never that person for real. That's never who I was, but I didn't know that. So I lived the life I thought was mine. Right? And so the Lord is endeavoring to introduce you to the you that you really are. Because eyes have not seen. You don't even really understand who you really are. You just understand who you've been. But who you've been is not who you are. And what you've been through is not your identity. It's the testimony of God's glory once you find out who you really are. Another thing he said, somebody, whoever you are, somebody is dealing with fear so heavy you won't even try. You've allowed the spirit of fear to stop you from even taking the first step. The devil is a liar. Break that spirit of fear off of your life. God already wants the spirit of fear gone. You have to, co you have to consent to that reality. And how you consent to that reality is the spirit of the Lord says, every time you at least try, you will break the back of fear. Whatever he told you to do, do it. Try it. How you know it ain't going to work out? You're going to let the whisper talk you out of the, the you that you really are? Let me, let me know. Fear is the enemy's way to keep you stuck on the person you think you are. Oh, man, if they find out who they really are, I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> Hope they never find out. When they get ready to step out, tell them something bad going to happen. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. They're looking. They're looking. Oh, I better sit down. That's the enemy's way to trap us. You got to take a chance. What if you do it and like it worked? What about that part? We almost there. I, I really felt this. I really felt that in the spirit, many of us, because I know I personally went through this. Many of us keep hitting resistance levels. It's like we keep getting to that, that, that point that we get to before we draw back. It's like it's been, it's been perpetual. It's been, it's, been, it's been like a cycle. The Lord needs to break that cycle out of your life. 
He needs to break that cycle off your life. And the only way that cycle gets broken is when you get to that place that you usually draw back at. You got to run faster. You got to break through that pressure point. That is a supernatural demonic pressure point set in place to keep you in check that you never evolve to the powerful vessel of God you've been created to be. When it gets really difficult, you're really close. When it gets really hard and you almost ready to give up, you like right there. The Bible says that Jesus had the disciples in the boat and he took them out to the midst of the sea. And when they got to the midst of the sea, they were going to cross over to the other side and a storm arose. And it was a crazy storm. And I thought about that and I was like, wow. It's like the Lord gets you all the way out and the enemy creates a storm to try to keep you from moving forward. But the reality is you are just as close to the promise (laughs) as you was to the problem. So when the enemy makes us retreat, we're actually making a longer trip back to failure than we would make if we would continue to press on in faith. Those resistance levels have to be broken. Somebody is dealing with depression and anxiety that's just demonic. It's perpetual, it's continual, it's tormenting, and it's demonic. But the problem is, as humans, we engage in practices that strengthen the demonic. So the instruction for you is, I heard this very clearly. The Lord said, trade in your social media for a lifestyle in his word, for a commitment and time spent in the word of God, and he will give you peace. Listen, I'm telling you. Social media, I really heard that. Social media is wrecking your spirit. It's wrecking you. We'll be far better. We'll be okay without it. Because it's the fear. Like, I can't let it go. What if I I need it? You don't need it. You don't need it. What we need, we need an alliance with the word of God greater than any other alliance that we've created in our life. Because the only difference between the man that I tell you about that I used to be, the only difference between the lie that I lived and the truth that I now experience is the word of God. When I found out what the creator said about me and I believed it, I was able to live it. And this is a much much better life than the one I experienced previously. All right, one more thing, one more thing, and we'll move on. One more thing. Y'all doing good. (laughs) The Lord said, stop all that crying. Stop all that complaining. Trade that crying and complaining in for the sword of the spirit and get to war. crying and complaining and get to war. Go to war for your life. Go to war for your sanity. Go to war for your family. Go to war for your identity in Christ. We're not conquerors. We are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. We have to get acquainted with war. Ain't no victims in here. Ain't no victims here. I got a whole story I can tell you. How much time you got? That ain't it, though. Don't matter what I've been through. What's more important is where I'm going. And where I'm headed is so much more powerful than where I've been. Them wasn't nothing but stepping stones to get me closer to the master. 
Hmm. It's wartime. The Lord is going to give you a second win. He's going to strengthen your knees to stand. He's going to strengthen your hands for war. He's going to give your mind vitality. Because you got work to do. God is raising us up, y'all. And he brought you here. Listen, we we warring together. The amazing thing is you don't even have to war by yourself. You surrounded by warriors who's willing to war with you. Hallelujah, Lord. So many of you feel inadequate. And dad told me to tell you he has already given you what you need. This is the crazy part. You're waiting. In your mind, you'll be good when. You can just fill in the blank. I'll be better or I'll be ready when. And you can, man, we be doing that our whole life. Man, just when I get old enough and get out the house, oh, okay, when I get when I get a good job, or when I save up enough money, or when I do, and it's always some carrot in front of your face leading you to this ethereal, mysterious, mysterious whenever that happiness and fulfillment is gonna show up at some level in the in the distance. No, 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 no. We are complete in Christ now. You are complete in him now, and you have enough strength. You have enough uh, everything you need to accomplish what he's called you to accomplish. There's enough in you now to get to your next step in him where he'll give you what you need then. But until we're obedient to step B, there's no sense in asphyxiating on step C. First things first. Move out on faith and commit to the thing you know he's stirring in you now. Okay, now we get to the word. And it's going to be quick. I got sense. I think the Lord got some business he want to handle here. And we're going to leave him room. And so he gave me one word. I kind of shared it a little bit earlier. This is the one word that kept just standing out of my spirit. And it's crazy. I don't normally share this kind of stuff because it's between me and the Lord. But I feel like we family. I can tell y'all. But I studied for like countless hours and, and, and several days for where I thought he was leading me. Only to last night when I got home from work at about midnight, I didn't feel settled in my spirit that that's what I should have been saying. All through the process, I'm like, this is what the Lord is saying. And last night, I'm like, I don't think this is what the Lord is saying. And I'm like, wow, Lord, this is a fine time to pull this one. <laughs> the Lord was like, I do it how I want to do it. Tuck in. Make you some coffee and tuck in. And the word that he's been pointing out, and it really, really what I, what I found out today, because he, he lets you in on it when, when, when he wants to, really what I found out is all of that studying and stuff I was doing, that was for me. <laughs> that was all me. And then he gave me the little part that's for y'all. <laughs> or for us. This is for us too, but all that was for me. He was like, no, nah, don't just come to me when it's time to say something to somebody else. I got to increase my appetite. You got to eat more for you. And so anyway, the word that we're going to deal with today is courage. Courage. We're living in such a time, the enemy is just like one big bully. And he's using every platform imaginable to try to bully the people of God. Trying to convince us that we wrong, we got it twisted, we the ones that's off, we crazy, we're intolerant, we're unloving, we the haters. Say anything, but like, look at you, uh, them bigoted Christians. Literally, the one who created everything called us as sons and daughters and we crazy. But what it has created, it has created... A society and an atmosphere where people have become uncourageous. I can't speak truth because people go, you know, scared to speak the truth. What do you think about marriage? Um, um, marriage. I mean, marry who you want. <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't do that. That ain't what we do. What do you think about this? And so listen, 
How are we going to affect the world that doesn't have the standard of God unless we show the world the standard? <laughs> you, see, you see what the devil's doing here? I keep telling this story so much because, listen, this is so relevant. I promise you, when I start coming to church, the preacher kept preaching about shacking. This is important for me to share this because, listen, we have to get back as the people of God to standing on the standard of God. Amen. Listen, we ain't, it's not my job to walk in judgment, but it is my job to tell you what the judge meant. Not only is it my job, it's your job. Your job is to tell the world what the judge is saying. Because if the world don't hear what the judge is saying, the world's destiny is already figured out. And if you really love God, you got to love people. And if you really love people, you'll love them enough to tell them the truth because the truth saves lives. The truth, even more importantly, saves souls. Hell is enlarging itself every day because we want to be politically correct and say the things that people want to hear. Not so, saith the Lord. I have separated and called you unto myself to use you as a mouthpiece in this season. So we have to be courageous. We have to have courage. We believe God. I don't even think in this department faith is the issue. We believe the Lord. There's no way we keep coming back here if we don't believe the Lord. I believe we do believe the Lord, but the Bible says that belief, you believe there's one God, man, you're doing good. You're doing good. But the demons believe too. And so although believing is good and having faith in God is good, faith without works is still dead. And so sometimes the work means we have to say what the Lord is saying, no more, no less. And so here it is, the word courage. We're going to go through the word courage. Did somebody spell courage? We got a smart church. <laughs> and so we're just going to go through the word courage, and I'm just going to kind of speak on each letter, okay? That's how the Lord gave it to me. We're going to break it down. We're going to start with the C. And so I'm going to give you real quick seven exercises to build courage. Is that all right? Seven exercises to build courage. First of all, we're going to define courage as the strength of mind or spirit that enables a person to act in the face of difficulty, danger, pain, or grief. Courage is the ability to move forward and respond and act even though adversity is right there. Normally, adversity says, uh-uh. They ask you, how do you feel about a situation? Well, I just believe that, yeah, that's, I mean, the Lord caused that sin. And, and, and opposition will be there, the looks and the stares and people waiting on you. And all you got to do, encourage, is just say what the Lord said. That's it. He'll handle the rest. Just lovingly say what the Lord said. And so, and so when you get the strength of mind and spirit in the face of adversity to still move forward, the enemy loses most of the control that he hoped to have over us. Like he loses so much of his game plan just when we're courageous. Because he wasn't counting on the courageous thing showing up. He was counting on the threat to come. You know how the bully do. You better sit down. Like, that's what he was counting on. Quick story. First got saved, new Christian, loving the Lord, everything about Jesus. I even carried my Bible around to everywhere I went. I was one of them new Christians, I promise you. This is a real story. I carry my Bible everywhere I went. I go to the store in Rite Aid. I'm in Rite Aid. I sit on the counter. I set my Bible on the counter, reach in my pocket, get my money out, pay for my stuff, pick my Bible up and walk out. For some reason, that was important to me. But I'm in Rite Aid one day, and I, I bumped into a girl that I knew from back in the day before I was saved. And she was like, hey, what up, Face? That was my nickname. She was like, hey, what up, Face? I was like, hey, praise the Lord. What's up? She was like, praise the Lord. <laughs> True story. She said, praise the Lord, H-E double hockey sticks. And I was like, I just turned around and walked off. 
I had nothing for that. I had nothing. I just walked away. And so crazy enough, for some reason, I'm talking to the guy who taught me how to do electrical work. I'm sharing this story with him. And I'm like, man, it was, I was in the store, and I said that, and she said what she said. And he's like, what'd you do? I was like, I walked away. He was like, oh, okay, I see what happened. And I was like, what? He said, the devil just realized all he got to do was raise his voice at you to run you off. Oh, boy. Man, I heard that. I'm like, what? I'm like, oh, that's what happened? Oh, it ain't going to be no more punk here. Yell at me again. And so moving forward, oh, I had an answer for that. Somebody yelling at me now. I said, praise the Lord. <laughs> but punking out and finding out that I punked out and hearing it like to my face, hearing that, oh, yeah, you just punked out on the Lord. I'm like, Man, I'm raised on the east side. Ain't no punks over here. <laughs> and when you really think about it, look at where you come from. Look at what you done already been through. Man, it ain't no punks up in here. <laughs> Man, devil got us messed up. <laughs> and so courage. See. Commit to daily Bible reading and prayer. There will be no courage outside of a healthy diet in the word of God. There will be no courage outside of that. I know this is so foundational. This is so old school. Read your Bible and pray. But you would be surprised how many of us do that so little. You would be surprised, even though that's widely known as like the rudiments of faith, the foundational beginning stages of faith, how many of us neglect that part of our spiritual walk? And I'm suggesting that to really engage fully in the courage that we need to be the type of Moseses that the Lord has called us to be, because you need to know that some of y'all don't really know like you're calling yet. But let me just let you in on this part because you can take this with you until the Lord fill in the details. A part of your calling is to be a type of Moses. The Lord snatched you out of the pit that you was in so you can be a visible evidence for people that need to come out of the pit that they're in. And so you're a type of Moses in the sense that he has anointed you to lead people to him. Now, we may do that differently, but you've been anointed to affect people for him. So know that's a part of your calling. Know that part. You ain't just bumping into people on accident. They may just casual, spontaneous interactions. If you realize that you're called to affect people, you'll see those opportunities a little different. One word can change somebody's truth. And so commit to the Bible reading. How many of us have been able to stay the course on our Bible reading for the year? Don't even raise your hand. I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. I know this number is going to be little. We ain't going to even do that to us. The Lord knows. But I brought it up anyway because I'm telling you, get back in the fight. Listen, all of that, I messed up, and then we just ain't going to never do it no more because we messed up. Them days over. No, you fall short, get right back up. Stop. Matter of fact, don't take so long to get up next time. You fall down, get up that day. Don't get up the week later and waddle in it for another week. So that week turns into a month, and that month turns into three years since you did the thing that you were supposed to be doing. A righteous man falls how many times? Listen, it ain't about the falling. It's about the refusal to get back up. Get up quicker next time is what the Lord is saying. And so get back in there. Get back in that word. I promise you Satan is throwing his best stuff at you. You would listen. You fighting a stack, you, you fighting a, a, a stacked deck. When you commit, when you committed to getting in that word, oh, the devil's like, hey, fellas, come on, meeting, meeting, emergency meeting. And we got these keys, we got these people over here. 1405 uh, East Pearl, I think that's where it's at. And uh, they talking about they about to read through the Bible together. And the Lord already showing up and showing out. And now they about to get in the word and go through the word again. I'm going to need you to do what you got to do. And like your life went crazy. 
You try to do your little Bible reading and stuff start happening in your life that you ain't, you like, what in the world? Yeah, that's by design. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. And so that ain't just little natural stuff that knocked you off your square. That was schemes. Those were deliberate, thought out attacks and plans to keep you from investing in your spiritual growth so you don't become a real threat. Because you stay in that word, we're going to lose touch of them grandbabies they got. Get them out of that word so we can have these grandbabies. Get them out of that word so we can keep working on that marriage. There's too much at stake for us to give up ground now. Reading the word and praying is like having a, 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 a Uzi or a fully automatic weapon that's fully loaded against the enemy. Some of us do one without the other. That ain't good enough. Doing one without the other is having a bazooka with no bazookies in it. I don't really know what goes in bazookas, so that's all I had. <laughs> but when you put them together, you are fully armed and loaded. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, so, so, so real quick, Joshua 1 and 8 for C. Study this book of instruction continually, continually. Meditate on it daily and nightly. And I can just tell you this, if, if, if you want me to translate that in today's vernacular, that read it, that read it continually and meditate on it day and night, I can translate it like this. This is the, this is the, the Ringo translation. It says, read your, treat your word like social media. Did I, did I hit it? Did I get it? <laughs> and be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then, somebody say only then. only then, when you make your way prosperous and have success in all you do, can you imagine living a life to where everything you do work out? It's not better planning that causes that to happen. It's obeying the word of God. The Lord know where he's leading you. I have no idea for real where my destiny is headed. I just know it's good. And I just know I kind of want it, right? And so I'm not responsible for plotting the course that gets me there. I'm responsible for being obedient to the steps that he points out at the time that he points them out. And so he don't need you to figure out to get to where you're going. He just needs you to be, learn to be a better follower. He needs us to learn how to follow better. And he'll get us to the place. And everything you do will work out. <laughs> okay, okay, and then, and then for the other part, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, three-word scripture, never stop praying. Never stop praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, just don't see God. Holy Spirit, stir up within us. Shift our affections around just so to where we'll have greater capacity to lean into your word and prayer. Give us an appetite for prayer and study, oh God, in Jesus' name. Oh, overcome evil with good. What you'll find out is when you commit to the reading of God's word, and the ingestion of God's word, and you commit to prayer, you'll find out that you will be more apt to overcome evil with good. A lot of time, evil shows up in many various forms to distract and to derail us off the path. And so many times, we don't overcome evil with good. We succumb to evil with flesh. You ever had somebody like, like get, get, get kind of like fleshly with you, and the first thing you do is you raise back up? Yeah, that ain't how that work. That ain't how that's supposed to work. That's playing into the enemy's hands. The Bible say don't do it that way because the weapons of our warfare, see, we fight different. And the classes that we, let me say this, the classes that we got coming up, yeah. rooted one, man, that class should be full. I'm just going to step out on a limb. This might be a little judgy, but I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to be courageous. Because we got armed guards in the sanctuary. Y'all got my back? There's a lot of biblically illiterate people in this room today. 
And you need that class more than you need half the stuff you committing your time to. We need that class on a level greater than the stuff that we have committed time to because all time spent isn't equally beneficial. Committing your time to the word of God, ooh, there's nothing, there's much, there's not much more, more beneficial than that. And so I'm just saying that because God is opening doors. We ain't just giving classes to give classes. The Lord is being strategic in this season. He says, get this class. Teach the people to war. Teach the people to know me. Teach the people to hear my voice. Teach the people to know what they're supposed to be doing. Get the people in position. He's building us up like an army. But we got to get plugged in to do the part that we need to do. So Rooted starts tonight to get a real grasp on the word of God. And then we got the thing starting Monday, the, the spiritual what, the spiritual weapons, a week from Monday. It was, it was a spiritual weapons class. Yeah. Ooh, that's, what, that's the season. That's where we at. Yeah, we about to be a little gangster church. <laughs> we about to be a church full of Jesus gangsters up in here. Woo-hoo-hoo. Yes, Lord. Where am I at? What'd you say, baby? Oh, New Testament class on the 11th. Uh, is that what you said? Uh, spiritual weapons on the 11th. All right. All right, come on. Let me get back here. So, oh, oh, was overcome evil with good. Romans 12 and 21. Do not be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Nothing confuses the enemy more than you keeping your flesh in subjection so the spirit of God can, can move through you. Because the enemy going to try you. And when you respond as Jesus did, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is written. Ooh. Ooh, you dangerous. And so three is you. You is uncover your true self. Uncover your true self. What you talking about? I kind of made, I kind of alluded to it earlier. Do you know that when God decided to wrap himself in flesh He signed up for the whole experience. Like, this is like past my pay grade, really wrapping my mind around it, but check me out here. When when, when God decided to come down in the form of a man, he, he he really lent himself to the full experience in the sense that he went through, like, the birth canal. He's like, let's start at ground zero. So he started in the womb. And he subjected himself to the whole experience. He didn't allow himself to have full knowledge and awareness of everything he was experiencing. How that's possible? I don't know. That's a God thing. But what I found out is when Jesus was born, Jesus didn't just know that Jesus was Jesus. Jesus committed to the whole experience. We find out in the earliest days of Jesus that he spent his time amongst the men of God, studying the word, learning the scriptures, finding out who he was. Remember when his parents went off and left him and they was like, where you was at? He was like, what you mean where I was at? You, I'm about my father's business. I'm back here in the word of God. We going through it. I'm finding out. And just like when he read that scripture one time, he read that scripture and it was in this moment, he said, this scripture is revealed before you now. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And we found out that Jesus, the Lord, allowed himself to experience everything and discover himself in the human form for our sakes. That's why we have a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities because Jesus in all points was tested and tempted like unto we were. And so he can, he he understands explicitly everything we go through. And so if Jesus had to commit to the word of God and receiving knowledge of his identity and purpose, how you think we going to get it? I said all that to say that you have to discover the you that you are in the word of God. This is your manual that, to tell you who you are. You don't know how to act unless you're defined by the one that created you. And once you start uncovering yourself, oh, I'm telling you, you're going to be like, mm, I don't even desire that old way. Some of the old nature that we still live out is because we just haven't found the better thing yet. Let me tell you, the better thing is upon us. And so R, we almost there. We got three letters left. I'm going to speed it up. R, replace worldly behavior with biblical truth. 
And we're going to let the Lord define whatever that looks like for you. I went on a cruise. Me and my wife went on a cruise that we really enjoyed a couple of weeks ago. But one thing that I was acutely aware of instantly upon this ship, I was like, I don't know how many demons. I don't know how many glutton demons exist. <laughs> but there were certainly one like on the ship. I'm serious. I, I mean, it, it was to the point to like, I got, and this is just me. This is where I'm at. This got what the Lord is doing in my life. I was grieved. I like, this is kind of sickening. <laughs> like day three, I'm on day after. I'm like, this is, this is too much, bro. I'm literally like, this is too much. I really felt like, but anyway, but before, instead of getting into all that, the point was, I just found out that that may not be my thing. We have to know what the Lord is giving us liberty for. And what the Lord is calling us away from. We can't just do everything based on who we are. I can go to the movies and watch almost anything. My wife be like, what you, what, what you want to go see? And I'm like, this thing right here. She'll look at the preview. She'll be like, no, nah, that's, that, that's a solo mission for you. I'm not going to see that. <laughs> she got better sense. I guess she, she guard her spirit. She like, I'm not exposing myself to that. How me and my relationship set up, the Lord ain't going to let me do that. And so that may be liberty for somebody else. But don't let somebody else's liberty become your liberty if the Lord is telling you that ain't what you're supposed to be doing. You got to know your lane because your anointing depends on you connecting to your father the way he designed you to be connected. And so you got to really uncover yourself. And it said, when we, the, the more we know about scriptural truth, the more we give Holy Spirit permission to point out what's for us. And so he told me, he was like, boy, that was like, Pookie. That was like me going on the cruise like putting Pookie in the crack house. <laughs> Y'all remember New Jack City? Yeah. How many of my white brothers and sisters watch New Jack City? crackhead, right? <laughs> okay, all right, all right. We'll move along. My wife said, keep it moving. I feel like, I feel like she anointed right now. Let me, <laughs> let me move on. All right, A. A. A is agree to be challenged past your comforts. This is a big one. You have to consent to it. The Holy Spirit ain't kicking in doors, but he says this. If you would get on this ride with me, I would take you beyond your wildest dreams. You got to fight to get past them comfort zones. Man, they set up to keep you trapped. They not set up to keep you comfortable. We probably should rename them because they're not really comfortable zones. They're really prisons. We got to get past the confinement of comfort zones because what the Lord is doing in your life is way bigger than your comfort level. Listen, you're dealing with a supernatural, all-powerful, mighty God that's trying to do exploits in your life. It's going to cause you to get outside of the rigid confines of your own, the limitations of our own minds to experience that reality. Who God is trying to do big things in our life. and We got to be willing to be uncomfortable for him to use us, right? All right, G, come on up, Daryl. We, we almost there, G. Grasp God's love for you. One of the biggest darts of the enemy is for him to whisper and challenge God's love in our own mind. Every time we go through something, he slides up. <laughs> Where's your God now? Yeah, you're right. Where is he? I ain't seen him all day. <laughs> Surely, if he cared for you like he said he did, this would be easy for him to move you through. Yeah, for real. Well, I got to go through this too, Lord. That's his job. He used to try to accuse God. Like, he used to go to God and be like, Lord, see, look, they don't love you. They keep messing up. 
But he found out, he's like, you know what, I'm really wasting my time. I'm not moving the big guy. The big guy's not moving off of that. He said, let me switch it up. Instead of trying to get God to love them less, let me just get them to love God less because the effect is the same. So we really got to grasp the love that God has for us. It's not some fickle, weak, easily moved love. God don't love like we love, and that's why we get it twisted. Because we try to equate God's love to man's love, and it don't even stack up. Isaiah 54 and 10 says, For the mountains may move, and the hills disappear, but even then my faithful love for you will remain. My covenant of blessing will never be broken, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. And the last one is E. Embrace a life of grace. Part of the problem is because we too often assess ourselves according to our limitations instead of assessing the situation according to God's unlimited power. God's grace is sufficient. And he said that when we, when, when that scripture, when that phrase was coined, it was coined in a moment to where one of his servants was suffering a real life discomfort. And the Lord decided for his own purposes not to remove that discomfort. But instead, to give the power and resource necessary to live through it. And so what I'm telling you is, not everything will just easily be broken off of your life. Not everything will easily just be made, just be moved out of your way so you can just, just easily walk into the powerful you that you are. Oftentimes, the Lord surrounds your calling in difficulty. Because the only way we'll achieve destiny is leaning and trusting on him. His grace is sufficient. I used to know, I used to believe that was true because I read it. And I try to make it a mental note to believe everything that I read in the book. But I lived through a season of my life to where I know way more than I ever knew before that God's grace is sufficient. I lost my junior. Khalil Donzel Ringo Jr. I find myself some days I just drive and I just keep calling his name. Just, I just call his name out. Just to remind myself, like, man, he lived. He was here. That was my boy. And I just found out that, man, if the Lord can sustain me, if God's grace can be sufficient yeah. in the worst time of my life, his grace is just sufficient. Listen, I'm telling you not what I heard. You can trust the Lord with your stuff. You can trust him with your failures. You can trust him with your hurts, your pains, and your disappointments. He's a big God. He wants it all. He already knows. You can trust him. He said, come, let us reason together. In these closing moments of our time together, I just really want you to know the Lord called you on purpose. He didn't see you born and was like, okay, there's another one. Let me see what I'm going to do with this one. That ain't how that worked. Before he formed you, before he even formed you, he knew you. Man, the Lord knows you. 
He don't need you to come in here and put on a face and act spiritual. That's not what he needs. He knows you. He knows who you are. He knows where you've been. He knows where you're at. And he still loves you the same. time in his presence again this altar is wide open do business with your father whatever it is you've been carrying come lay it down don't leave out of here with that stuff just come up here and say it out loud to yourself what it is you know is hindering you you can trust him he can be trusted